In today's video, I plan on surviving 100 days in hardcore ultra modded Minecraft. Now, I realize that you've probably seen thousands of these videos, but I promise mine's a little different, okay? See, I'm playing the Better Minecraft mod pack, which adds well over 200 mods that just make Minecraft amazing. Now, obviously, I'm not the only person who's done it with this mod pack. I believe there's a couple other people, but if you haven't seen those videos, there's everything from new structures to crazy new mobs. And let me tell you, you do not want to mess with one of these hydro because this man will rip you to shreds and it's it's just not a good time another thing which to me is the coolest thing is the updates to the dimensions for starters the ender dragon is much much harder to kill and the end itself is just way harder and way cooler but the coolest thing of all the dimension updates is the fact that there is a new abyss dimension in the abyss mobs are like 10 times harder than normal and wardens are even able to spawn which makes it an incredibly dangerous place however with that greater risk comes better rewards like this abyss infused netherite armor which is twice as good as normal netherite now for these hundred days i have five goals slay the harder ender dragon obtain an elytra journey into the abyss dimension and lastly just survive because we are in hardcore mode all that being said if you guys enjoy it press that red button and join the waffle army but anyways let's get into it day one we spawned in and already got three achievements yeah let's go baby three achievements now i opened up our little starter book and completed my first quest which gave me an atlas and a journal now atlases are really nice because they always basically provide you with an infinite map that just sits in your pocket the next thing we did was gathering some wood and once i had a fair amount i made my basic tools and what was already amazing about this mod pack was the fact that it had the lumber mod which basically turned me into paul bunyan with how fast i could cut these trees down which made gathering wood really easy and very nice after gathering some stone i upgraded my tools and noticed a ship floating in the ocean only issue was that i saw some pillagers running the ship and i wasn't too sure if i could take them on this early when i had no armor and no shields or good weapons however the next day i decided to say screw it and journey to the ship i went full on james bond and broke into the bottom of the ship and was lucky enough to break straight into a separate little storage room so not only did this have loot but it was safe for the time being now the loot was pretty awesome i got this cool chef's hat and apron and was ready to start my own cooking show at this point that is until i found some better leather armor and eventually changed out of my cooking outfit i started to try and clear out the ship by playing some peekaboo with a skeleton and a pillager but i i guess pillagers don't really like peekaboo because this guy got mad at me and just i mean he shot me square in the face he was even using special arrows which hurt even more and just really wasn't nice so i didn't want to play with him anymore after my peekaboo strategy failed i tried to outsmart them and broke another hole into the ship but was greeted by three pillagers staring at me ready to blow my head off while i was fighting the group of pillagers one came and flanked me and i barely escaped to the storage room with only half a heart left so not the best start to this fight on this ship i then decided to take a chance and dig up and happened to literally mine straight under a chest and a spawner so i broke the spawner and opened the chest and actually got some great loot for this early in the game i ended up using the iron ingot to make a shield and then moved on with trying to clear out the ship the main strategy i use now was the footsie strategy that i used back in my rl craft playthrough and once i finally cleared most of the pillagers i went to kill the last one but realized that my shield just wasn't working against the pillagers which didn't really make sense to me and made things just a whole lot harder i found one more chest which had some average loot in it and it was at this point i decided i needed to get off this ship because i had no chance of surviving all these pillagers i mean at this point i could barely even kill one without almost dying so i mean we just had to escape i mean this look at this this is what we're dealing with here and keep in mind i was stuck right in the middle of the ship and had no way to deal with all these enemies at this point i decided to try and break out and escape on a ship but i just kept running into more and more pillagers every hole i broke out of the ship and i finally found an opening and took my chance to escape and my god was i glad i did because there's i mean there's no way i could have survived trying to fight through this just looking back at the ship and after escaping i eventually found this nice looking plains biome and saw this awesome looking tower in the distance now i wasn't sure if it was dangerous or not so i decided i would first set up a little shack before before heading over now my shack wasn't nothing much but it was it was safe enough to hide out when nighttime falls and it also just provided me with a little bit of storage now i couldn't stand the crafting menu so i decided to change the resource pack off of it because it was just driving me crazy nowadays five through nine started with some simple cooking and then like any good minecraft survival world it spun off into a four day mining escapade which was so much fun for me because i hadn't experienced these new types of caves yet which aren't out yet in the official caves and cliffs update so it was really 
really fun and through the first chunk of mining I had no torches at all so I was just mindlessly roaming through the dark feeling like Helen Keller just just praying to find any sort of coal and eventually we got some torches and boy I mean these caves were loaded with a ton of ore to mine all this I decided to make an iron pickaxe and just mine for days on end we got a ton of coal iron gold redstone and even diamonds like like a lot of diamonds and boy do these deep slate diamonds look so cool I mean I, it's something with like that nice tealy blue with the dark surface it just oh man it looks it looks awesome we got 11 diamonds total from one giant vein and one mini vein right above it and I wasn't sure on what I wanted to spend these on yet but I figured I would take care of that once we got back to the surface now while I was looking over a little lava lake I got jump scared by a little green goblin and I smacked the out of him until I realized that he was friendly and he ended up being a goblin trader and had some pretty cool trades but unfortunately I did not have the resources to make any of them but I think these guys could play a big role later on I eventually found this little underwater swimming hole and saw a diamond under the water now I went down mined it and unfortunately it was the only one there but I mean I couldn't complain at this point I had 12 diamonds which was amazing considering that I lived in a tiny wood hut at the moment what surprised me the most was the fact that there wasn't a whole ton of mobs during this entire mining adventure like total I think I killed two zombies and then when I found this awesome low-hanging chasm a creeper came and tried to blow me up but outside of that there really wasn't any crazy amount of mobs even for how dark it was and after killing the creeper I didn't find anything too exciting so I ended up just going back up to the surface and going to bed day 10 started out with me killing a skeleton for swimming in my pool right outside my house then after that I began smelting all that iron that we had mined for from our previous trip and it was honestly more than I'd even realized. Now I decided to make a full set of iron armor and upgraded our shield to a diamond shield which honestly looked amazing. With our diamonds I finally decided to make a sword and a pickaxe and my god did we look snazzy as ever. Ladies and gentlemen I mean this diamond shield just looks so crispy. Now that was basically all we did for day 10 and when day 11 rolled around it was finally time to go check out that tower. Now when I initially climbed up the tower I didn't realize how tall this thing actually was and it was just annoying to climb man there were just ladders that led straight under stairs so those were useless and then the stairs were at the perfect height to where you couldn't walk up them either so those were kind of useless so I ended up having to kind of use both at the same time to climb it and I finally got to the last ladder and climbed up with my shield drawn and instantly found a waystone now these waystones are really nice for teleporting around the world so I was pretty excited about finding one because I knew I was going to be moving pretty soon here. Now the chest at the top didn't have anything too crazy but free loot is free loot and we got that waystone. So I mean I couldn't really complain so I was pretty happy. Now days 12 through 25 consisted of pure adventure with some mixed results. So to begin with I raided this secret illager base deep inside of a forest and managed to kill off their guards. Now during my raid I found a bunch of these loot huts which primarily contained iron and bread but when I was lucky I would also find some diamonds in these which was amazing now I later found what seemed to be a bit of a distress signal and decided to take all the fireworks I could for when we eventually got an elytra during this world and as I continued to search the illager encampment I found that they were actually protecting some sort of a zombie villager camp now unfortunately I had to kill all the zombie villagers to survive but I mean they were also just kind of being dickheads for you know trying to murder me so I mean they kind of deserved it but like also they you know they deserved it man those they were not nice I I found another one of those teleport towers, ascended it, marked the waystone, looted the chest, and was now on a quest to find some friendly civilization. While sailing across the sea, I managed to find a shipwreck and proceeded to deep dive and found some emeralds, iron, and most importantly, a globe. Now, this globe didn't really do anything, but it was like cool collector's item, so I wanted to keep it and put it in my future base. And the next thing I found was a giant rock ball, and you would not believe what I found in there. An ad. Now, before we get into the rest of the video, I do want to take a few seconds to thank our sponsor right now Archon is offering a free rank for any of their amazing realms and all you gotta do is follow the link in the description enter your minecraft username click free rank enter my youtuber code waffles and boom you've got a free rank that makes the server even more fun to play make sure to use my server IP that is on screen and in the description see you guys in the Archon 
Nothing, okay? I found literally nothing, man. They, they had this giant rock ball that looked amazing. It wasn't just a boulder. It was a rock. And I dug straight through the middle and found absolutely nothing. So I was a little disappointed, but it was time to move on with my adventure. The next thing I found while adventuring was a little water camp that was being protected by drowned. Now, the loot from the chest was pretty awesome, and the coolest thing to me was the Aether Dragon Eggs. Now, at the time, I wasn't sure what these would do, but later on, let's just say I figure out how these things work, okay? And if you want to see that, you'll definitely want to stick around. Later, I found yet another shipwreck, which was actually on an island this time, and the loot was terrible. But right next to the shipwreck, I found a destroyed portal, which gave me a block of gold. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get the chest because I would have to dig underwater, and that would just be a pain. So I decided not to get it. Now, after some more sailing, I found an island, two of these teleport towers, and thought this would be a great place to build a base in the future. However, our current goal was still to find some friendly civilization. Now my biggest issue during this whole escapade was the fact that I was only finding islands and could never find actual continents. Like no matter where I went I would just find an island and you know one time I found like a big island and at the time I thought it was a continent until it you know I saw the sea again, so that was annoying. However, once I finally did find a continent, I found these glowing looking flowers that dropped these cool looking gems. So I made sure to collect as many as possible, even though I, I had no clue what they did. And another issue I had been having up to this point was the fact that my inventory was so full and there, like I just didn't want to leave anything behind. So I was constantly leaving some decent loot behind. And honestly, I was kind of too attached to these fireworks, but I just, for some reason, I wanted to keep them really bad. And while clearing the flowers, I found this sign and pointed in two directions, one saying 600 blocks and the other saying 400. Now, I was praying that these would lead me to some sort of village. However, while I was exploring the surrounding area, I found three structures that needed to be explored. Now, the first one was protected by an iron door and I was getting ready for the worst one descending the ladder until I realized that it was just an underground village, which was honestly really cool. Like, I don't know why they don't have these in normal Minecraft. But yeah, so we found our friendly civilization. However, I didn't get a whole ton of loot from it because inside it was really confusing so I ended up just stealing some library books and decided it was time to leave because the librarian was getting a little suspicious of me for you know stealing half their books there. After the village I invaded some illagers cabin and decided to relieve them of their duties through the use of my trusty sword. Now since they were no longer living there I figured I could you know loot their chest because they weren't going to need it anymore and in it I found some protection three leggings which were honestly pretty nice. Now the next house we visited was not as nice as the first one when I first entered the basement I was instantly attacked by evoker magic spookiness which just wasn't a good time and honestly scared the crap out of me fortunately there was a wooden chest in the corner that provided protection from the ground lizards or I don't even know what they are like they're just to me they look like like ground lizards I don't know tell me what you guys think they look like because I always just think like just like some snapping turtle and a lizard had a baby and that's it and it comes out of the ground clearing the upstairs area is when things started to get interesting. For starters, I got jumped by a couple skeletons, and after killing those things, I was able to sneak up to the next floor and break the next spawner with, without alerting the skeleton that was literally standing right next to it. And I mean, I guess they probably don't have the best hearing, but then again, I mean, like, can they even hear? Because, like, they don't have ears, but, man, you know, I, I don't know. Someone in the comments, again, tell me, can skeletons hear? I don't I don't know, man. I, I mean, I'm, I'm conflicted here. Anyways, moving on, the next floor was an interesting battle between myself, a ladder, and more skeletons. At first, I thought I was in trouble when I saw these three skeletons about to come and murder my face, but they clearly aren't very smart either because they could not figure out how to use this ladder, like, at all, which was not only really funny for me, but also kept me alive because these things hit, like, absolute dump trucks. I eventually made the bold decision to climb up and break the spawner, and this almost cost me my life because after breaking the spawner, I got absolutely blasted by these skeletons again, and by the time I got to the bottom of the ladder I was one shot away from dying but once again they couldn't figure out the ladder so we survived now when I got to the balcony of the house this is when I started to realize how tall this thing was like I thought I'd be in and out of this house quicker than your uncle at, you know your family Christmas party but instead I had to kill two more of these skeletons and was rewarded with this nice chest of diamonds golden armor but like I just when when looking outside it didn't look this big but it, it was massive which is also what the ladies tell me a lot so I mean I can kind of relate to the house now I eventually sprinted up to the top of the tower ignoring all other mobs and found another aether 
Panther Dragon Egg, and an enchanted book with Vein Miner on it. After finishing that endless house, I eventually found a village in a mini desert biome. Now, the first thing I did was climb to the Waystone Tower and mark it, and after that, I looted the chest and got some emeralds, iron, and most importantly, another enchanted book which had aerial affinity on it. Now, this enchant sounds like super cool, but then I actually read it and it basically just allows you to mine blocks faster while you're midair, which I mean, really isn't that helpful because I can't just levitate and you know, I'm not just gonna jump and try mining things when I could just build a block under myself. So really not that important, but it, it's an enchanted book, I guess. Now the village itself didn't have a whole ton of interesting loot except of this hunk of a man. Like my God, this man's boobs were bigger than any woman that I had ever seen. And bro, I mean, you gotta skip chest day at some point, my guy, this is ridiculous. I mean, it, like it, it uh, how how was your back able to hold up your titties, man? My god. I saw a boat in the distance and decided that I must conquer it. Now, while on my way, I made friends with this orca and got a purple achievement, which was cool. When I finally got to the boat, I realized it was a wandering trader, and oh my god, this guy was trying to rip me off off dude like he was trying to sell me a wooden hoe for 54 emeralds if i wanted my girlfriend i would not pay 54 emeralds okay i take her out to taco bell and buy her two burritos and call it good so wooden hoe for 54 emeralds not worth it okay now once i learned that he was an absolute con artist i i had i had to kill him man and his loot was actually really good he dropped a bunch of enchanted iron armor iron ingots and even some quartz which i didn't end up taking but you know i definitely made the right decision taking him out days 26 and 27 we finally stopped adventuring and it was now time to gather our materials to make ourselves a nice little base here specifically a castle like compound now to do this i was gonna need a lot of stone sandstone and oak wood so to start i made a little camp to store all my loot and spent the rest of this time gathering materials the next two days were spent moving back to the island i had mentioned before because i didn't like that spot i just picked out so went back to that double tower island and over these two days i basically just reset up camp cleared the surrounding area of all its grass using a water bucket, flattened the terrain, and did some more resource gathering. Now I also made a stone and wood cutter in order to make our stone and sandstone bricks for a fourth of the normal cost, so it was just so worth it. And I would also end up using that wood cutter to strip all the wood for the build, which was actually really nice because it would have taken a lot of axes to strip all the oak logs. So I definitely made the right choice there. Now day 31, I laid out the foundation of what would soon be our castle type walls. At the time, I wasn't exactly sure if it was going to be a full-on castle or just have aspects of a castle, but I figured I'd figure it out as I go on. And at the end of the day, this was what our foundation was looking like, and I was pretty happy with the floor plan. I didn't want to make it too big because I knew even a build of this side was going to take me quite some time, so I wanted to keep it relatively small so most of this 100 days wasn't just me building because we have a lot of intense adventuring to get to. Now, the next day, I decided it was time to make a quick enchanting area. Now, in all honesty, I had most of the materials I needed for the build so I didn't exactly need to enchant my tools but at this point I figured I might as well so I did. I also made some diamond boots and a diamond helmet with my remaining diamonds. Now the reason I made the boots and helmet over chest plate or pants was because enchants I had on both my iron legs and iron chest plate were really good and I figured it'd be better just to make the boots and helmet. The chest had mending while the pants had protection 3 so I mean you guys tell me if you think that was the right move. Now my first enchant was a protection 4 and breaking three on the helmet then i burned a level on a feather falling book and made a fresh pickaxe and only got efficiency four on it which was really disappointing days 33 and 41 it was now finally time to build up these walls now the walls themselves weren't super difficult to take care of and i would say that these only took about five of the eight days to complete them all when strictly looking at build time during these eight days i did actually need to mine for some more materials and to do this i only used iron pickaxes because they just felt wrong breaking diamond pickaxes on cobblestone even though in the long run i think it's technically more efficient to use the diamond but by far the most annoying part of this build was making the tops of these towers it took me a ton of different iterations to find something that i liked and once i did it was a bit of a pain to replicate perfectly from tower to tower but we eventually got it done and this is what the base was looking like
Now it looked pretty good so far, but days 42 through 49, I spent making the last adjustments and details to the wall. For starters, we finished up the tops of the wall and eventually filled in the tops with wood so I can now walk across and look out across the land. Now this is what it was looking like at this point and overall, nothing was all that difficult to build seeing as I kept the build for the most part simple and honestly, I was happy with it, but was not a fan of the towers themselves. So I had to detail them like I said before. I basically just replicated the wall design and adjusted the towers and was actually surprised on how much I liked the way it looked. Now I did make a separate world to test the, the designs in creative mode to avoid constantly making changes in survival mode which probably saved me a ton of days in the 100 days of survival so it's definitely worth it. Now while I was checking out the tops of my wall I found out that I was actually being invaded by a bunch of illagers and I mean these were not your average illagers guys. These guys had enchanted crossbows and even like diamond armor, gold armor, iron like just a bunch of armor it was a little intimidating i can't lie now the first group alone was not an easy task and i was lucky enough to spartan kick the one wearing diamond armor off the wall which basically made everything a whole lot easier and after i finished that first group off i scouted around and noticed that there were just at least two more groups here but you guys will see there's actually quite a few more like there were some coming from the coastline there were some just swimming in the ocean still i mean you yeah, will you know what we'll get there now i definitely didn't jump down and fill an mlg water bucket play or anything and you know with like because i'm just too good at this game like i wouldn't do anything like that now once i regained my health from my amazing mlg play i began my assault on the squad of illagers in vanilla minecraft these guys are really easy to kill if you have a diamond sword but in this modded version they were so much tankier and dealt so much more damage that towards the back end of the fight i said screw it and i went full rambo mode even though i only had one heart and you know what happened i killed them both but oh my god i was i mean i was sweating bullets man like this entire fight i I just I just thought I was gonna die and after I finished killing them I turned around and was just in awe of how many arrows these guys shot at me like this deer looking thing was just staring at me like I'd done something wrong which I mean he's probably a little confused on why one guy just went and killed like four people but you know it's just it's easier not to talk about these things oh wow he you know what man he he probably saw that guy who got spartan kicked and he probably saw him like splat on the ground and just explode so oh man yeah I don't blame him for staring man that would be gruesome to see man so yeah I I kind of feel bad for this guy the more I think about it. Now, I found out that the other squad was trying to steal all my library books that I stole, so I dealt with them swiftly, and at this point is when I realized that I hadn't survived the entire invasion, but was instead surprised by that one group coming from the coastline. Now, I dealt with the rest of them and could finally catch my breath without having to worry about catching an arrow to the knee, because one thing's for sure, this waffle is not ready to stop adventuring like those guards in Skyrim, man. I mean, we got a lot more of these hundred days to do, and I can't be taking an arrow to the knee. Now while exploring my island, I saw a giant looking pirate ship in the distance and just knew that I had to go and take it. I broke in through the hole and was greeted by a skeleton with a flame on his bow and apparently all of these things had fire aspect on their melee weapons and flame enchants on their ranged ones because every time they touched me, I was just lit on fire. It was like it was, it was like me walking into church today, man. I just, if I walk in, boom, fire. I eventually snuck and broke the spawner in the mid-level of the ship and didn't realize what exactly I got myself into here. I looked up towards the deck and was instantly jumped by a ton of different skeletons and these melee ones hit hard like i honestly wish they had swords instead of these axes because they deal like way less damn and i ended up accidentally making a bit of a defense system with the water bucket which not only prevented me from being lit on fire but also prevented the melee skeletons from getting close enough to hit me which made everything a lot easier and i mean if you just look here these things were literally falling on top of me and lighting me up like a freaking scoreboard so this little little defense system literally kept me alive here and this same type of battling continued for a very long time and my only advantage was the fact that I could make them shoot each other and create little mini civil wars so that I mean there's you know we had one thing going for us but the outside of that not much I thought of trying to break into the captain's quarters of the ship but realized that it was also heavily guarded which meant the only way I was getting out of here is if I fought my way through that top deck now after a whole nother day of fighting it seemed as if there were less and less skeletons so I checked on the upper deck and noticed that there weren't that many left at this point i felt like i killed a million so i i feel like i was you know finally rewarded for all my hard work after clearing the top deck there was only one more place that needed to be cleared the brig of the ship now i honestly didn't even notice this thing when i first broke into the ship but boy am i lucky that i did not open this lower area of the ship i mean you would think this would be probably the safer area of the ship because like why why are you gonna sit there and protect you know random blocks of coal and 
like you know just just lame resources like that but no no there was literally so many skeletons that they were like entity cramming and luckily i just blocked them off and swung away until they all finally died but like they were seriously just stuck like spinning in a circle because there's so many of them which was for one really good for us two really funny and three it was just it just amazed me on like how many were down here after i finished those guys off i finally conquered the ship however when i was leaving i noticed a lot of purple glowing under the water and like you know at the time i was like what is that it was an absolute horde of axe wielding skeletons so yeah i i mean i decided to nope the f out of there because like i did not sign up to fight the crew of the black pearl from pirates of the caribbean so i just went back to the safety of my nice comfortable island also let me just side note side note if you say caribbean when referencing that movie or any of the movie series i guess you're wrong okay just stop like just trust me it's caribbean please i know there's the caribbean but like when i got back to the island i finished the day off by getting a flame enchanted book and enchanting new diamond pants that i had just crafted now day 54 was a bit of a waste all i really did was burn a bunch of level one enchants on a book and outside of that nothing really exciting happened however the next eight days were all spent in the nether and it was finally time to explore the thing that i had been dreading up to this point because i wasn't sure how much more dangerous it was going to be than the normal nether and let me tell you this place gets crazy okay after some brief exploring i found this crazy looking structure that was just filled with piglins and piglin brutes like this place looked like elon musk should be living here because it was just like massive and fancy and manipulates crypto prices and uh, wait, off track anyways so a uh, quick thing you guys know the term pigs can't fly yeah that that's a lie okay boys let me tell you something the, the second i finished climbing the first watchtower a pig flew up and tried to murder me now of course it had to be a brute which meant this guy literally hit me like a dump truck and nearly knocked me off the tower to my death he took me down so low that i had to pause the game just to catch my bearings before i died to the stupid pig like this guy was just battering my shield and i knew that if i got hit even one more time i was dead so i made sure to play as defensive as possible and fortunately was able to kick him off the tower just like i did to that illager earlier i did not realize how deadly these things were because the second i killed that first brute another one tried to fly up and attack me again and then then while going through my inventory i got shot by a full-fledged firework like man fourth of july it's past man you're you're too late i get you know wanting to use your your old fireworks for fun but it's it's too late at this point man come on like i i know those things aren't street legal bro i know you're using those illegal fireworks that your mom told you not to use so just leave me alone man now, the first actual room i found was basically an armory that had diamond pants iron blocks and gold blocks the next room i found was a meth lab and i mean these boys were cooking up some stronger stuff than walter white himself because they were just cracked out man like my fight with walter white was actually really stupid because he gave me weakness and he had regen potions so you know normally you'd think this is a death sentence for me but this guy was basically hitting me with a feather at this point so it just it's like we're having a little pillow fight you know him and i were just just whacking each other with pillows and then eventually i got sick of playing with him i blocked him downstairs and moved on with my adventure after clearing the room i bridged my way over into what looked to be a nice little bedroom and man i could get used to a bed this big right now i sleep in a, a broken up bunk bed so sleeping in something like this would be nice i saw a piglin chilling in the next room over and i don't think he liked me spying on him because he just ran straight up on me and went full kool-aid man and busted straight through the wall trying to murder me i mean this guy was pissed every time he'd hit me he tossed me like 20 feet away and once again i had to be taken down to one shot because apparently i suck at this game or these things are just brutal i don't know but i barely killed the guy and I was just glad to be alive at this point. Now in the room, I found a bunch of barrels with a ton of great loot. The first barrel having eight golden apples, while the rest of them having a bunch of cooked food, raw food, and even a golden apple that was enchanted. Or oh, I guess that's a god apple. I don't, is, are those still god apples? I think they were a while ago. I don't know if the people still call them that, but to me, it's still a god apple. Now, I decided to collect all the food from the campfires and found a piece of ancient debris hiding under it, which was amazing. I got really lucky because I wasn't originally gonna go through and take all the food, but luckily I did and we got free ancient debris. Underneath were also some smokers which allowed me to cook my newfound raw food which just gave me a ton of meat. Like at this point I was feeling like Arby's because I had the meat, you know what I'm saying? Later I found my way into a wooden manufacturing area and had a long battle with yet another piglin brute. After killing another brute I noticed he dropped a cool looking axe which dealt quite a bit more damage than my sword at the time. I found another one of those cooking rooms, took all the meat, 
took the ancient debris and then found another cooking room and moved on once again and I was not complaining about the repetitiveness of these cooking rooms because it gave me easy ancient debris. Then it was time to fight another three brutes and man the fact that these things could break blocks just made everything so much harder. Like normally you can just hide behind a wall and smack them and kill them easily but these guys just broke through the wall and if you look closely you can even see that they have golden apples sometimes which makes them even worse. Now I jumped to hit one and got sent straight into a wall like the piglin was playing volleyball with my body and after killing him I found you guessed it another ancient debris room and even a netherite chest plate hanging in one of the hallways now unfortunately it was basically completely broken but it was still a cool find I eventually ended up finding this portal room looted the barrels and decided I wanted to get out of here before I died because we had come close so many times already so I lit the pre-made portal and left now I teleported deep in a cave and decided that the best course of action was to just dig straight up and pray that I don't run straight into lava. Now when I reached the surface I found a waystone tower and saw an entire coliseum in the distance which looked amazing. For now I just marked the coliseum for later and went home to store all of my new goodies. Day 64 through 68 began with us completing one of the nether quests which gave us a fancy deed thingy and a little deed reader. And I kind of got a weird vibe from it but when I used it all it did was basically give me a map. I don't know if it was supposed to do something else or if I just don't know the point of it. It, but I just said screw it and moved on. At this point, I decided that we needed to kill the pigless nether boss. This man was beefy and just a little scary. So needless to say, I was a little worried when I decided to do this task. Now I knew this guy was already really hard to find in the nether, but I got pretty lucky and found him in only four days. And I, I god man, I must say I was I was scared to fight this police chief, man. <laughs> Get it? Like, you know, pigs, joking name towards cops. <sighs> Yeah, that was that was a miss, but you know, let's just move on. Anyways, yeah, the guy's scary. He has a whole lot of health and a whole lot of armor and hit harder than my drunk uncle when I beat him in ping pong, okay? So before I charged Pigless, I downed a strength potion I had stolen from the Piglin Fortress and charged him. During the fight, I downed a god apple and continued my assault with this fancy axe. And one thing I forgot to mention about Pigless is the fact that he teleported like an enderman, which made fighting him a whole lot harder because he just teleported behind me and smacked me from behind like my name was Mia Khalifa and I just I wasn't really into that so I eventually took him down to low health and like he must have been part cat if you know what I'm trying to say because he just was too scared to finish the fight teleported away now eventually after playing a little hide and seek with him I found him finished the job and got about five levels of XP and his mace which looked really cool like look at how massive this thing is in my arms man talk like talk about a third leg am I right at the beginning of this next set of days I decided to continue our dimension hopping and went into the cave dimension which was home to that spooky Hydra that was seen at the start of the video. Now we spawned in a cave, shocking, I know, and began mining some of the silver ore, which is actually better than the diamond. However, I don't think I ever end up using this. After that, I found Casper the mining ghost and killed him. And it got me thinking, like, where does a ghost go when you kill it? Like, I mean, I guess you just go to, you know, whatever afterlife dimension you believe in. I don't, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, you're the one sitting here watching me play a blocky game, struggling to survive. So, I mean, don't ask questions, all right? After some more exploring, I found a massive cave and explored it, finding a whole lot of nothing, if I'm being perfectly honest. Like, this was a giant open space, cool new dimension, and I don't find anything, all right? I eventually ran into this wandering trader who, after not taking any of his deals, got mad at me and tried to murder me. And, and man, if he pulled it off, it would have been the perfect crime because I don't think Pigless and his cop friends respond to a whole lot of 911 calls in a, you know, whole different dimension. So good effort by that sneaky trader. The only or significance that I really found was Lapis, which was actually really nice because we were running low from so much enchanting, but I was hoping to find some cooler stuff. But later on, we did. I found this odd looking structure and decided to light it up and discovered that it was actually a Hydra chamber. Now, I wasn't too sure on how to summon it at the time, so I just decided to break the block and there the man was. And let me tell you, I, I know I call a lot of things scary in these playthroughs, but like this thing actually like gave me a jump scare because A, I wasn't expecting it to spawn and B, I knew that this thing would actually one shot me and i know a lot of people exaggerate in these but i'm not kidding like i tested it before this playthrough to see how much damage this thing did full diamond enchanted armor one shot no problems so, so to kill this 600 health beast i was going to need a bow and a nice beefy one at that so at this point i decided to venture back home and begin a little side quest before fighting this hydra when i got back home i thought about trying to upgrade my gear like crazy but at this point i knew i wasn't gonna have time to upgrade all the gear get all 
the fancy resources, enchant all those things, and then still get to the abyss dimension. So I decided to stick with the bow plan. Now one thing I didn't account for was the fact that this thing may have been able to break down walls just like the brutes did earlier, but we'll just have to see if that happens. Now, after burning some levels on books, I finally got a bow enchant that was showing infinity on it, which was the most important thing for me. Now, once I had that all set up, I just needed to get some XP, and I figured I could knock out two birds with one stone by finding a nether fortress and getting the needed blaze rods for the end. Now, if you've watched any of my previous 100 day challenges, you'll know that I have notorious bad luck for finding these nether fortresses, and today we actually got somewhat lucky. It only took me about a day of searching to find one, which I think is about like seven times times faster than the average. Once I was in, it was time to cut down these fire shooting commies. Don't know why I call them commies, but I think it's funny, so I'm gonna leave it. Now, these blazes weren't your average firebrenders, all right? Some of them were soul blazes, which just shot blue fire, and the hardest of them were the shield wielding blazes that were just really strong. For starters, when they had their shield up, you couldn't hit them, and to make things worse, they had this move where they just shoot out rings of fire and were basically just dealing damage, and there's nothing you could do about it. And Needless to say, my armor took a beating during this adventure, and I think this clip sums it up best on why that happened. I was just getting surrounded and abused by these things, but fortunately, our armor kept up, and I mean, I also ate a golden apple, which helped. But at the end of our blaze farming, we had a total of 27 blaze rods, thanks to the looting tool on our sword, and we also hit level 30, which meant that we could finally enchant our bow. But you know, I, I gotta say, man, I killed a ton of these blazes and only got five levels, which to me me is a bit of a ripoff like like I know I have looting too but to get 27 blaze rods it, that takes a while like just to put it into perspective and you would think after killing that many I would get a little more than five levels but this game made up for it by giving me this nasty bow on top of infinity this thing gave me power four and flame on it which was almost the perfect bow all I needed at this point was unbreaking three so to fix that I combined some unbreaking one books from burning enchants earlier and slapped unbreaking three on to the bow so we were now ready to take on this hydra and i mean hopefully he doesn't just break through the wall and make this whole adventure not worth it because not only would i have just wasted my time getting a bow but i'd also get one shot which would cut this video like 15 or 20 days short which would not be good days 80 through 81 i went back into the cave dimension and it was now finally time to kill that spooky hydra now in all honesty this fight was a joke like stupid easy because i i mean i cheesed it all right he, he couldn't break walls so i just sat there 40 feet back and shot the thing through a tiny little window i just want to say though like how does a pig break down walls with ease while a giant three-headed hydra can't like how does that work game anyways after bowing him down i got all the way up to level 64 he dropped some hydra leather and hydra fangs which could be used to make a giant sword which i can promise you we're going to be doing that because the thing is nasty now when trying to get back i did notice a half broken hydra structure below and decided that i might as well kill another one just for that extra XP and loot. Now I was honestly terrified of breaking the spawn block because I wasn't sure if I could even outrun this thing in an open space like this. Like you can see here I just kind of kept inching forward trying to break the block while staying as far away as possible. However once again the fight was really easy because this guy just got stuck in a little waterfall and again I just bowed him down grabbed the XP and loot and went home. Now that I was home I could make my massive new sword known as a bone great sword. This thing dealt 18 and a half hearts of damage with the same attack speed as a standard sword and it wasn't even enchanted yet i mean you know boys you know what i'm gonna say look at how snazzy we looked i hadn't had a sword this big in my hand since the last time i was on the hub okay and i regret that joke but i'm leaving it again man i'm just i I'm, yeah i ended up getting attacked by an armored zombie and figured it was a great time to test my new sword and oh my lord this thing dealt damage the rest of the second day consisted of me trying to enchant and get a fortune pickaxe while also getting sharpness four on my sword and we did get a great sword not only did it have sharpness four but it also had fire aspect unbreaking and knockback honestly it wasn't a huge fan of the knockback on it but i couldn't complain with everything else it got days 82 through 84 were spent mining with our new fortune pickaxe and i honestly only cared about diamonds at this point and didn't even bother with mining anything else i will say this mining trip was a bit annoying because i was constantly underwater when searching for diamonds and had no clue on what the best diamond level is anymore so yeah 
it was a bit of a train wreck, but it was pretty successful. Outside of the diamonds, I found another one of these drowned monuments under the water. And then you guessed it, more diamonds. In total, we got 32 diamonds, which was honestly more than enough to finish out these 100 days. So I was happy. Day 85 is my least favorite day of every 100 day video. That being the sorting day, I always manage to just wait so long to sort all my loot and it just gets worse the farther I get and I hate it. I hate sorting my loot, man. Just the process of it, like afterwards, it's obviously really nice. But man, doing it sucks. I also enchanted some boots, which took quite a few levels and I just kept disenchanting and re-enchanting them until I finally got good enchants. Yes, I just said enchants about 14 times. Sue me. After the boots, I was combining books to get Unbreaking 3 and Power 5 of my Bow, but at this point I ran out of levels and needed to get some more before I could do that That being said, I just realized that I only got unbreaking two on my bow earlier But I mean it's really not a big deal and you want to know a great way to get some levels killing the ender dragon That being said my next goal was to find the stronghold and enter the end Which was a little scary because this mod pack creator says that the end is much harder than the vanilla one the Next two days well more specifically nights were spent killing as many endermen as possible to get the ender pearls needed for the end with only 13 days left i knew that we were going to have to be speedy if we wanted to get an elytra and explore that abyss dimension spoiler alert we do but at this point i knew i had to be fast days 88 through 90 consisted of our exploration to find the end fortress now while sailing across the ocean i found this like abandoned type village that consisted of wither skeletons that shot fireworks and flaming arrows and after spending part of day 88 i decided this just wasn't worth my time the loot wasn't good and like I said before we were already on a time crunch on my way to the fortress I ended up finding a friendly village on the night of day 88 now I wanted to sleep so I kicked a baby out of its own bed and then slept because well I just I just didn't care, man. I'm taking a waffle sleep over a baby sleep any day of the week. Eventually, I followed the ender eyes to the spot above the fortress and decided it was time to dig down. Now, at this point, I was going to need some dream level luck because I had broken quite a few ender eyes while trying to find this place. So I was worried I was going to have to farm for more ender pearls. When I broke in, I noticed that this was far from your average end fortress. Like, unlike vanilla Minecraft, this actually felt like a fortress. And at the time, I wasn't even sure I was in the right place. Now, one one similarity this thing had to vanilla minecraft is that it was easy to get lost in this thing like i swear especially in vanilla man i will run in circles for like 10 minutes straight until i find that stupid end room i'm like it shouldn't be that hard this one it makes sense because it's massive but vanilla minecraft shouldn't be hard but for some reason it is now while looting a storage room i noticed that down the hallway was the end portal gate after all this searching it was finally time to go in and face this ender dragon Now, at first, I was one ender eye short, but remembered I had one left in my inventory, so I literally just had enough, and it was now time to enter the end. When I first entered into the end, I mined a ton of end stone in case I needed to climb the tower to destroy the crystals. And the first few things I noticed that were different about this end is the sky and the floating castles that were in that sky. As always, once I started fighting, I took out all the end crystals and I never actually had to end up towering up to destroy them because I just went full American sniper and shot them all from the floor of the battlefield. Once I had them all destroyed, it was now time to just shoot this thing out of the sky. Now, it didn't do a whole lot more damage than the vanilla dragon but this thing definitely had a lot more health the first time the dragon came down i wasn't able to hit it with my sword for some reason i ended up having to switch to my pickaxe to get this thing out of melee mode so i could actually keep dealing damage to the thing and later on in the fight the dragon shot me like four thousand blocks in the air like i was one of those ground rockets after a long fought battle i was finally able to take the dragon down with my bow and while trying to celebrate my victory i ended up pissing off some endermen so after taking care of them it was now time to get my xp at this point I decided to farm some endermen to get some extra ender pearls and then decided to head over to one of those floating castles Which were actually far from castles and more just like floating islands on the island There were a bunch of prop bulk spawners now I have no clue what these are I still don't at the time of recording this because I just broke these things as fast as possible because I did not want to find out What they were there wasn't really too much on the islands that I could figure out So I continued my adventure until I found this massive end tower now. There's no boat alongside of it but I figured I wanted to loot this thing and I just knew there was gonna be some awesome loot inside of it so 
so I had to clear it. This place was absolutely packed with shulkers, and instead of spending seven years trying to kill them all, I was in full speedrun mode, so I just left all the spawners and then let all the levitating magic balls send me up to the loot rooms. I ended up finding a totem of void undying, which means I couldn't die to the void, which was honestly pretty nice at this point because I didn't have an elytra. The next floor had even better loot. It had a god pickaxe with curse of vanishing on it, a ton of diamonds and berries, and another totem of undying. Now, honestly, my favorite loot from this tower was the free shulker boxes, and they were even dyed, which was nice. While exploring the end, it was just really cool to see the awesome looking biomes. Like, this shot right here is just really cool to me, even though my shaders wanted to screw it up for me, but, you know, still kind of cool. It almost makes it seem like a like a spooky trailer. Like, like you ever see those memes where it's like, oh, this guy was a normal family man until he wasn't you know what i'm talking i don't know how to explain it where it like it, it basically it just goes from like a normal picture with his family and then it just goes like all black and gray and spooky like this is what this is what my shaders did to me basically hopefully someone knows what i'm talking about but i, I might just sound crazy however after some more adventuring i found a huge end city and an end ship more like a like a fantasy warship which i knew man this thing must have had the elytra i was looking for I implemented the same strategy in the end tower as before and just loaded up on more diamonds, berries, and shulker boxes. Now I got to the top of the tower and was attacked by this slime looking thing. Now at first I didn't think anything of it until I realized that he was basically a mimic of my own armor and nearly killed me. Like the man just copied my armor and my sword and I was even forced to eat one of my god apples and barely escaped with my life thanks to actually a shulker forced me into the sky so the thing couldn't smack me around anymore. Now after that near-death experience i made my way over to the ship found an end crystal which i thought was weird cleared the ship and there it was i finally found the elytra to fulfill my challenge and if you notice there's something special about it the thing was already enchanted with mending and unbreaking three which literally made this thing absolutely perfect now i had brought my fireworks from the beginning of our hundred days and decided to fly around the end just as a little bit of a celebration and i mean this this dimension was awesome i flew through some different biomes and even saw these like floating star looking things and it's just it was just really cool now by the time we got home it was day 99 and i still needed to get to this abyss dimension so to do that i had to go gather some obsidian combine it with the fancy plant gems that we got earlier and we were now able to make our portal day 100 we finally entered the abyss dimension and boy this place was terrifyingly cool right when we spawned i saw an elder health bar on my screen and honestly i was a little worried that i was gonna get one shot right away but fortunately that didn't happen while exploring i found my brother carl Carlos, who was trying to put his chores onto me and I just I didn't want to do his quest so I just left him alone and the first mob I ended up facing was an abyss guardian and the way the abyss works is that there are mobs of varying levels what I mean by that is while this abyss guard and this zombie were easy to kill there are also higher level versions of both of them that are much scarier while flying around on my elytra minecraft told me that I got scared and I could no longer see which was not the best combination when trying to fly around and not die so so yeah, I mean, you know, eyesight's a little important when flying. Believe it or not, I know it's crazy. I was determined to find one of these elders because I wanted a bit of a challenge and while searching for it, I found this tower that looked really interesting but it ended up just being pretty bland after exploring it, like there was one spider I killed. While doing some more exploring, I got jumped by a soul guard that did almost half my health in one hit so I instantly ate up a gold apple and continued our fight. Then to make things worse, an abyss wolf came and joined in on all the fun we were having together and it just I had to run away like I was in the Olympics man I mean I was running for gold I felt like Usain Bolt and at this point I knew I couldn't keep running like this forever so I switched my elytra on and got smacked right as I took off my chest plate which took me down to one and a half hearts quickly blasted off and got some cover and regained my health before moving on in my adventures while flying around I finally found an elder and man this thing was not scary at all like he, first of all he was tiny man I, I saw that big old health bar and I thought thought he was gonna be huge but you know at the time I was like okay he's level 10 all right so I just decided I'd, I'd try and bow him down first and once again super easy so I just jumped down finished him off with my sword and we really had no issues at all the last thing I found was this massive structure which actually ended up being an illager tower and I have no clue how these boys made it in here you know there's nothing too exciting in here outside of the king catching some arrows straight in the mouth and after just some basic clearing we were out of there now when I got in the courtyard I found a black Black iron golem which was actually really tanky and he took quite a while
while to take down so here's probably the hardest part of this whole tower now i must say guys if you've made it this far please consider joining the waffle army by subscribing and liking the video each person who does this helps support my dream of making this a full-time job and it literally takes all of 15 seconds of your day to make my day better so please just consider it and i do have to shout out sombre 101 hopefully i'm saying that right he is my first patreon supporter and he even joined the third tier of my new patreon which meant that we're even friends on discord now so if you want that or you want to be shouted out just like sombre here be sure to check it out in the description each tier has its own perks and even if 10 percent of the people who watch this video just do the lowest tier one of a dollar fifty a month i could easily turn this into a full-on job which easily me and i'd be making three or four of these a month and i know a lot of you guys want more content so if you're one of those people saying that consider just giving me a dollar right i mean it's just a dollar a month goes a long way and i know that sounds stupid but it really does but yeah there are my 100 days in these 100 days man we captured pirate ships built what could have been an amazing castle i i don't know why i abandoned it but i did killed the ender dragon got an elytra killed a giant pig monster a three-headed hydra and explored and survived the abyss dimension so i'd call this a success i also got some cool links in the description so check those out there's twitter again patreon and i do want to thank my sponsor again for this video but anyways guys i will see you next time